Excuse me, could you tell me the closest mall entrance to Macy's? Have you ever been caught completely off guard by somebody who came along and woke you up out of your daydream? Donna was. She had just gotten off work from her job at the mall, and she was tired. All she wanted to do, and all she could think about, was getting home and relaxing. All the same, from, the, from when he first talked, Donna didn't like the sound of his voice, but she couldn't put any, her finger on anything in particular. And, after all, she didn't want to be paranoid. Uh, no, I, I don't know, and I'm in a hurry. He ignored her no and pressed forward. Oh, come on. I just need to know where to go pick up my daughter. Suddenly, the young man pulled out a gun. He and his buddy wrestled Donna into a waiting car and drove away. Mr. Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters and friends, Donna had just become one of the seven million Americans in 2004 who fell victim to violent crime. If you look around the room, Statistically speaking, if we had just a few more people in here, one of us would become a victim of violent crime this year. Maybe a little paranoid isn't such a bad thing. By paranoid, I mean first off being aware of your surroundings. Have you ever been in a parking lot and had somebody come up to you and say, excuse me, can you tell me how to get to... Sure, I have. But have you ever said to yourself, Chauncey? What? I call myself Chauncey. Have you ever said to yourself, I wonder if he's using this as a trick to rob me or to assault me? It's happened to Donna. In fact, personal safety expert Gavin DeBecker even has a term for this kind of little back and forth. He calls it an interview. Ted Bundy, the notorious serial killer from the 1980s, used this exact kind of interview with many of his victims. Donna's attacker was interviewing her to see whether she was aware of what was going on around her. Attackers like this guy are looking to take advantage of somebody in a position of weakness, an easy mark, if you will. Gavin De Becker also tells us that the first step in defending herself is to be aware of our surroundings. That's the first step in neutralizing their advantage. The second step is paying attention to our intuitions. Have you ever had a funny feeling about something or somebody and then said to yourself, you know, it's probably nothing. That funny feeling is your intuition speaking. I think a lot of times we don't pay enough attention to our intuitions, but they've been trained by years of experience in life and they know a lot more than we give them credit for. In Donna's case, her intuition was talking to her, but she didn't listen. Excuse me. Can you tell me the closest mall entrance to Macy's? Uh, no, I don't know, and I'm in a hurry. Oh, come on, I just need to know where to go pick up my daughter. You see what he did? He didn't take no for an answer. The safety expert Gavin DeBecker also tells us that not taking no for an answer is one of the strongest warning signs that somebody doesn't mean us well. With guys like this, your intuition is your ammunition. Sadly, Donna didn't use her ammunition until it was too late. Are you wondering what happened to Donna? Well, after riding around in the car for several hours, they pulled over and the gunman got out. His buddy, thankfully, had an attack of conscience. And while the gunman was gone, he let Donna run free. A much different outcome came to my friend Jennifer. Excuse me, <laughs> could you help me? Somebody stole my wallet and I need money to get home on the train. Like Donna, Jennifer was caught completely unawares, in her case in a dark metro parking lot. Like Donna, Jennifer was tired and that's all she had on her mind, getting home. And like Donna, her intuition was telling her things weren't right. But unlike Donna, Jennifer listened. She turned, to him, she turned to him and said firmly, No. He ignored her no and pressed on. Oh, come on. You don't want me to be stuck out here all by myself, do you? Your intuition speaking? Right. He wouldn't take no for an answer. Jennifer noticed too. 
So she turned at him and she yelled, I said, no, leave me alone. Now, is Jennifer being a little too paranoid? You know, we'll never know. Because that scum ran away as fast as his legs could carry him. You might even find that listening to your intuition gives you a little surprise. Jennifer feels a greater sense of confidence in herself now because she knows, first, that she listened to her intuition, and second, if anything bad had happened, she'd have been one step ahead of it. You know, I told Jennifer's story to my 14-year-old daughter. She was 12 at the time. She looked at me with newfound confidence in her big brown eyes and said, thank you for telling me that story, Daddy. So should we be paranoid? Well, please be aware of your surroundings. Please listen to your intuition. In fact, if you only take one thing away from this speech, let it be your intuition is your ammunition. It'll keep you safer, it will give you greater confidence, and it might just save your life. Mr. Contest Master.